Good day everyone, this is Engineer EMV and welcome to my channel. Before we proceed, hit the like button and subscribe for more civil engineering topics and practice problems in my channel. So welcome to the third part of our practice problem solving involving investigation and analysis of singly reinforced beams. We have here a summarized up the given. The base of the beam is 250 millimeters. The effective depth of the beam is 400 millimeters. Compressive strength of 21 megapascal and the yield strength of the steel is 275 megapascal. And our reinforcements are composed of four 25 millimeter diameter bars. So the first question is we need to find the value of the balance reinforcement ratio. Second is to find the nominal moment capacity. And lastly, we need to find the design flexural strength or the ultimate moment capacity of the beam. So first step, finding the balance reinforcement ratio or what we call the raw balance. We can use the formula raw balance is equal to 0.85 beta 1 multiplied by fc prime over fy multiplied by 600 over 600 plus fy multiplied by dt over d so you will notice our compressive strength is 21 megapascal so it is automatically the value of beta 1 will be 0.85 since the compressive strength is less than 28 so by inputting our values 0.85 multiplied by 0.85 multiplied by 21 over 275 multiplied by 600 over 600 plus 275 and the value of our dt over d is automatically 1 since we only have a value of d and it is assumed to be the same so by computing the value of raw balance we can get a value of 0 0.03783. And that is the answer for the first question. So for our second question, we need to find the value of our nominal moment capacity of the beam. So by recalling our previous steps, we first need to equate the value of the tensile force and the compressive force in the beam. So it will be T is equal to C. And next, we need to assume the value of our Fs. So in here, we are going to assume that our Fs is greater than or equal to Fy. So T is equal to ASFY is equal to C, 0.85 Fc prime AB for the area of the compression block. So let's input our values. AS or the area of steel is composed of 4 25 millimeter diameter reinforcements multiplied by Fy, 275 is equal to 0.85 Compressive strength of 21 multiplied by A as our unknown and B, 250 millimeters for the base of the beam. So by solving for our A or the depth of the compression block, we can get a value of 121. So next, we are going to solve for the value of C in which we can use the formula C is equal to A over beta 1. And our beta 1 will be equal to 0.85 since our compressive strength is equal to 21 megapascal. Our answer will be 142.353 millimeters. Next, we need to check if our assumption is correct. So we need to solve for the value of Fs. So it will be equal to D minus C, 400 minus 142.353 times 600 over C, 142.353. So, our stress in the steel is 1085.95 megapascal. So, it is obviously greater than Fy. So, our assumption is correct. Next is, we need to solve for the value of the strain in the steel. It is similar in solving for the stress in the steel. We just only need to change our multiplier. Instead of 600, we need to use 0 0.003. So, we get a value of 0 0.0054297. And it is greater than 0 0.005. So our member is within the tension controlled section. So automatically, the reduction factor will be 0.90. So next, we need to solve for the nominal moment capacity of the beam. So in here, we are going to use the compressive force. So it will be 0.85 Fc prime multiplied by AB multiplied by the moment arm D minus A over 2. So let us input our values. It will be 0.85 multiplied by 21 
multiplied by A, 121, B, 250, D, 400 minus A over 2, 121 divided by 2. So we can get a value for our nominal moment capacity of the beam. It is equal to 183.317. So don't forget to divide the value by 10 raised to 6 since we need to convert it to kilonewton meter. And that will be our answer for the second question. Our third question, we need to find the value of the ultimate moment capacity of the beam. And it is just simply by multiplying our nominal moment capacity by the reduction factor of 0 0.90. So it will be 0 0.90 multiplied by 183.317 and we get an answer of 164.99 or simply 165 kilonewton meter. And that will be the answer for the third question. So in solving our fourth question in this problem, we need to find a safe live load moment if the total service dead load is 96 kilonewton meter. Use NCP 2010 provisions. So from our preview solution, we got a value of 165 kilonewton meter for our ultimate moment capacity. Take note that in the NCP 2010 and also similar to the NCP 2015, the basic dead load and live load combination is 1.2 for the dead load and 1.6 for the live load. So let's input our values 1.2 multiplied by the service dead load 96 plus 1.6 multiplied by our unknown, the live load. And we can equate it to our factored or our ultimate moment capacity. So in this problem, I did not include the effects of the self-weight of the beam because the answer it generated is not in the choices. So by solving our live load, our safe live load moment is equal to 31.125 kilonewton meter. And that is the answer for the fourth question. For the fifth and final question in this problem, the case is that if the beam is 5 meters long with a total service dead load moment of 96 kilonewton meter, find the maximum concentrated service live load acting at the midspan that can be supported by the beam. So in here, I made a drawing so that we can easily analyze what is our given. So our concentrated load P is located at midspan. We have a service dead load moment of 96 and an ultimate moment capacity of 165 from our preview solution, and a safe service live load of 31.125 kilonewton meter. So we will solve the value of P from our safe live load. So by recalling our previous lessons in our engineering subjects, the maximum moment in this type of beam is equal to PL over 4. So our maximum allowable that will be used is 31.125 and we can equate it to PL over 4. Our length is 5 so now we can solve for the value of P. P is equal to 24.9 kilonewton. And that is the answer for the final question. That's all for this video. I hope you've learned something. And if you have questions, inquiries, and topics in mind, just comment it down below. And let's see what will be our next topic in our next videos. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more civil engineering topics and practice problems by Engineer EMV.